Yes. When I was a kid and I would like record little radio shows on my tape recorder, mm -hmm. all I remember is that Why Does It Hurt So Bad was always number one. <laughs> <laughs> and number one this week. Why does it hurt so bad by Whitney Houston? <laughs> <laughs> and your audience of how um, many people? Me. I'm the audience. Okay. I'm the creator and the audience at the time. No one was listening to me, but hey, you're listening now. I would love it if like your mom called in and she was just like, <laughs> baby, shut the hell up. It's time for dinner. I'd be like, there's no callers. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. And welcome back to Two Game Mads. It's Matt Palmer. And it's Matt Steele. And I am very much in a Whitney place right now. That's because I saw the film, Whitney Houston, I Wanna Dance With Somebody. It was a theatrical release, a biopic about her. Stanley Tucci plays Clive Davis. It's fine. The best thing about it is that through most of the movie, I'd say 90% of the movie, the performances and the uh, times that she sings are actually times that Whitney has sung. And it is all based on, she put out a 2014, or the estate put out a 2014 Whitney's Greatest Life Performances CD. And so a lot of the uh, scenes are lifted, use that audio on these live performances. And when I tell you, there is no better live vocalist ever than Whitney motherfucking Houston. And it's like, all right, People out there, I know if you've watched our channel before, you know I'm a Mariah fan, you know I'm a lamb, number one, number one, still am, always will be. Mariah would be the first to tell you, while she likes a live performance, she likes connecting with her fans, she comes alive in the studio. Mariah is a, a craftswoman when she's making her songs. She when is she a is recording artist. A recording artist. Yes. And obviously her vocal is out of this world, but it's like, you can tell, even when she's at her peak vocally, that like the live performance isn't her favorite thing in the world, which I think is fine. Everyone has things they love. Whitney, when she got on that stage, the choices that she makes vocally, the fact that Adam Parnell, our lovely patron, said this to me, and it was absolutely right, that Whitney never performed the song the same way twice. Mm -hmm. Every single time, it's like she's ad-libbing over the song. like. People are like, well, she didn't write her own songs. Like, how is she even really a musician? And it's like, watch her sing these songs live. Watch her interpret these songs live and tell me she is not a musician's musician. Like, she could do it all. I'm obsessed with her. There will never be another. I know you haven't talked, I apologize. <laughs> I it's just, fine, you know, I'm just here with a smile on my face look, and a song in my heart and I'm just ready to hear some beautiful singing. I have a lot of feelings about this <laughs> and so we should probably just go into the performances. I'd also like to point out the only reason I am not playing the Why uh, Does It Hurt So Bad uh, performance from the MTV Movie Awards is because we already reacted to that in like greatest live diva performances. So you should watch that because that is also another one of her greatest performances and not one that's on that 2014 release. Mm. And so I rec and I do love that the movie does have a big moment about why does it hurt so bad, which wasn't even a big hit, but I'm glad it was featured in the film. So we're starting with Whitney Houston's live television debut on the Merv Griffin Show in 1983. This performance is featured in the film and she is 20 years old. No one knows who she is. Clive Davis is the guest on Merv Griffin Show introducing the world to Whitney Houston because he's positive she's going to be a star. Yeah. And is like, Merv, just like bring her on, have her sing home from the Wiz. Put her in some puffed sleeves. Those sleeves are puffed. Those she's are puffed sleeves. 20 years old, maybe 19, we're not sure, like the air date versus her birthday. But when I tell you, the power, the soul, the heart. This is the only version of home that exists. I'm sorry, Diana Ross. Listen, <laughs> as a Stephanie Mills stan, Look, I love, am offended by that. We love Stephanie Mills. And she had a great little pop song that was in Pose and used incredibly in Pose, which we love. But this is the way the song is meant to be. Okay. Okay, yeah. all right. It's mm. <laughs> Whitney Houston. This is Whitney Houston. And whoever's upscaling these Whitney performances, like on YouTube, you're doing the Lord's work, truly. Look at her belt, that cinched waist, clapping for the audience. <laughs> oh! Take it yes! Slow. Take it slow! <laughs> Take it in. Mmm, so quiet. Is there a more perfect vibrato? This is such a stunningly, like, subtle, like, heartfelt intro. Like, yeah, hold on to your fucking hat. <laughs> People were probably watching this being like, what? I know. Woo! I mean, but when? There were like three networks at this point. You just sit in your fucking chair and wait. <laughs> I love that. Woo! Hey. 
I also love how her hands, she's just like giving you a little of this and bringing it back. <laughs> Painting the picture. Woo! Makes it all so clean. Yes, I also love just like, she takes her shit so fucking slow. Yes. Like, we're about to watch another performance where she's like, we're gonna sing this first half in halftime. <laughs> half as fast as it normally is. <laughs> Yeah, direction. Mm. You know, direction. Mm. Oh, I've heard this so many times. Affection. <laughs> it's just like. It's the effortlessness. Mm -hmm. The heartfelt performance. And the confidence for a child. A child! Mm. 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 It's like, are you just born with that placement? I mean, of course, her mom is a singer, yeah, so she got training from a very young age. But this is. Here we go. Mm. Yes! <laughs> She's always reaching those arms out too. She knows. <laughs> like, I have no idea how home really goes. <laughs> this is how home goes. <laughs> Tell me, should I try and stay? Or maybe I should run away? Oh, that was good. I know! Would it be better? Oh, that was good! <laughs> yes. Oh, that is Sissy in the back. Because they. Showed that in the movie, like, oh, Sissy's conducting the pianist. And I was like, that's some bullshit. No, there she is. Oh, she's singing, man. Oh, oh. It's so, it's mm. so she's not breaking a sweat. No, she's like, this is a normal Tuesday. <laughs> my television debut. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't recorded my album yet, but I'll just sing. Like, did you breathe? No. <laughs> Bitch, did you breathe? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> just that added little cherry on top. And she's still like, oh, thank you guys. Oh, thank you. That was no, thank you. Thank that you. Was, you guys liked it? Thank you. Yeah, oh, yes, thank you. Yes. It was a good day. You guys have a great night. <laughs> Insane. Like, and Clive Davis is probably just like, well. I, he's like, I'm going to be sitting on some money soon, aren't I? Because <laughs> God damn. And the thing is, like you said, she already had the con like the confidence for it. She had just the point of view. She mm -hmm. had all of the technical tools and the fact that she's only going to get better from there mm -hmm. is terrifying to every girl in the world, I'm sure, who's ever wanted to sing in 1983, because it's like, well, gotta hang it up now. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that she took like a three minute song and made it five minutes, good for her. It's like when she took I Am Changing and took like, you know, a, a four minute song and made it about 20. <laughs> hey, I mean, if you don't think we're gonna watch her sing something from Dream Girls, you will be absolutely incorrect. <laughs> it will not be I Am Changing, but we're going to jump to I believe 1990, this is Arista's, which was a record label at the time. It is uh, their 15th anniversary. And Whitney sings The Greatest Love of All. Mm -hmm. And I would argue that this is maybe the best live performance of all time. <laughs> Better than uh, the one, uh, the, what's it called? Yeah, the one, one where they're playing with the poker? The cards? Poker. What poker? Yeah, the one we were just talking oh, about. Oh, that one is more like, Embattled. <laughs> this is 
<laughs> That's like, I'm sweaty, I'm tired, stuff's happening in my system. Emotional, and it's like comparing Mariah's If It's Over 91 to Butterfly era when she's singing uh, the Patti LaBelle, If Only You Knew slash uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. It's just like her, their voices are in different parts of their lives. And this is the like pristine, flaw free part and less the like emotional, I, I'm fighting for this. I part. don't <laughs> really know all those details, yes. but I you understood. You hear what I'm saying? I, I, un, I felt what you were saying in my okay, heart. Okay, good. This is like, <laughs> There are no flaws. Okay. Vocally, there are, it's like a vocal masterclass versus like, oh, this is an emotional expression that is beautiful vocally. This is like, none of you bitches could ever do this. Mm -hmm. All right? Because they can't. And again, I was like, Matt Steele, all these performances are very long. So, hunker the fuck down. Whitney loved the long performance. Because I've never heard the greatest love of all slower. <laughs> mm. So, 1990, she's a huge star. Her hair is bigger. Bigger hair. You know, we're just coming out of the 80s. Big hair was still a thing. She's like, what, 27 here? Uh, yeah. I guess, yeah. Is that 28? Yes! That's all you need. I love her with her hands. She's just like... I love that two notes in. People are already applauding. <laughs> they know. Like, has this song been slower? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh! So many notes on this. And it's like, did you rehearse it like this? Did you arrange it in your head before you walked on stage? Or are you just ad-libbing over the song? There's no way to know. <laughs> it just comes from her on stage. And like to be that beautiful on top of it, it's not yeah. fair, truly. That hair is so up and not deflated. I know. How do I get that? Lots of hairspray. <laughs> That's <laughs> how we. <laughs> Reminder that we are in the first half of the first verse. <laughs> so everyone. Yes! That camera guy's so lucky. <laughs> so close. He's to so this close to that brilliant. sound. Brilliant. Mm. And it's like <laughs> long ago. <laughs> Back then. And it's like think of a like more like yeah yeah this song is fine whatever whatever. She's elevating it to a level that it's never seen before or since. Mm. She's just floating away. <laughs> yes! Give it a little snap, a little yes. nubby. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> What a great song. Oh, that was good. Unbelievable. Yes! Ah! Oh, it's her whole fucking body. <laughs> Take it back. So this is, again, chorus number one. <laughs> Which I love. All right, let's see what she's gonna do next. Everyone, it's not like you're on a roller coaster. A slow one. A 10 minute <laughs> but one. it goes up and comes down, baby. Mm. Mm. And then like, 
Let's just change the melody of the chorus. Let's yeah, do that. Why not? <laughs> I hate that no one sings like this now. No. There are no ballads like this. <laughs> and this one was in the movie, and I was like, I guess we showed her perform it at like Sissy Houston's concert when Clive Davis discovered her, but like they should have just shown this. This was it. This is it. I love little dangles on her dress. <laughs> I love a dangle right love here. Love a dangle. Where her heart is. This is what I'm saying! <laughs> this is what I'm saying. I love it when she starts bouncing. It's so crazy how like clear her I, like head voice like is after doing all that. I like, know. Once once I do loud, I'm fucked. I can't I go know. Back. It's like oh, that's this is all we're doing. <laughs> yeah. We're doing Faltine. We're pushing it out till and the she's end. She's like oh yep, jump up. <laughs> Here we go. Like, that's not imagine. human. This isn't human. Imagine. She's a robot and she's <laughs> not functioning. <laughs> yeah, just a second. I'll take it back. <laughs> I'll take it back. <laughs> like, motherfuckers yeah. stand. Truly. I, that's the worst thing about watching these old school Whitney and Mariah performances. Like, if you motherfuckers don't stand up, no one sounds like this. Mm. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. They're standing now, but y'all should have been standing should, in the middle. It's too late. Yeah. I don't accept it. Yeah. I, it's, it's so funny because yeah, like every performance like you see at the Grammys or whatever now gets a standing ovation. I, right. It was like, like in the 90s, like we had Mariah and Whitney and Celine yes. just singing yes. like their asses, like, doing inhuman things that like, oh, like yeah. no human being Sh shouldn't be able to do because no. that's your power is too mighty. <laughs> they were doing this lot and like people were just in the audience just like, ah oh, yes, just taking it oh, for granted. Yeah, like what a talented yeah. person. It's like, no, this is once in a lifetime shit that you yeah. were sitting in on and you should have stood your ass up. Yeah. Well, we, I've stood up learned. for worse shit. I've only stood up for worse shit. Nothing's been as good as that. Yeah, there's <laughs> only there is only worse shit in Honestly, the world than it's like true. that. So it's true. Uh, what I love about it also is like not one note that came out of her mouth was the same as another. No. Every no. single like she never repeated any type of choice. It was just all different all the time. It was thrilling. It's just also I just will never know. But it's like, did you plan these things beforehand? If this is off the cuff, it's almost frightening. Like how dare you change the chorus melody each time you sang it and it's always sound so perfect. Like yeah. how? Yeah. How? Yeah, and be like so confident to do that. I could never. No. I could never. Never. Imagine. Guys, now on to, I guess, some opera and musical <laughs> theater, which I love. Yes. Well, so The Wiz was also musical theater. It was. Yeah, you guys, you're getting some musical theater uh, tonight. You're welcome. This was a Broadway night. Hi. So this, Performance at the American Music Awards is a performance that was, not to spoil the movie, which is fine. The final scene of the movie was a flashback to Whitney's 1994 performance of I Love You Porgy, and I'm Telling You, and I Have Nothing, which is 10 minutes long, and it's very good, and Whitney's performance there is very good. She did it once in 1993. <laughs> and uh, the camera's not great. I wanna thank Dutch music fan 1992, because he or she has cleaned up the audio a bit. Just, I mean, just listen. 
Just like, listen. I, you know I like quality, but yeah. I feel like you've watched enough theater bootlegs that you're gonna enjoy this. Oh, please, girl. <laughs> you I, don't need HD. Girl, I love just a blur, as long as I can see that whole stage. Well, this is a bootleg quality. It is officially 10 minutes and 41 seconds. I think the video drops out at points. Baby, I watched oh. the entire three hours of Ragtime 1998 <laughs> in all blurry, far I away. I feel like you've probably done that recently. <laughs> this is uh, I Love You Porgy, and I am telling you, and I have nothing. Mm, I love that. <laughs> I love her. And she's just so clearly just a fan of music. Yeah. Like, it's just like, I want to sing amazing songs. There's no barrier. Mm. Imagine sounding like that, about to put out the fucking bodyguard, or maybe you put it out, I don't even know the date. This is 93? Yeah. Bodyguard was like 90. 92? 92. 92. Okay. 91, I think. I don't think 91. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yes, just like the peak of her powers. Who needs a video? Well, I don't need to see nothing. Mm -hmm. I just need to hear. And if anyone has like a brilliant quality of this, please let us know. <laughs> Someone has that. They've got to. Someone has an archival footage. Audience is like, oh. I know, like, I don't want to clap even. I know. Ooh, that transition! <laughs> I know. It's like just going straight into it. Mm. Oh. Mm. Like the clarity yeah. in that upper belt. It's like you can feel it all the way from her toes. Yes! She sings with her entire body. Mm. They couldn't cast her in the movie. I guess she wouldn't be right for Effie. <laughs> in 2006? No, in 90, uh, 93! I want to say there were rumors that there, like, there were. was... But it's like, would she have been Dina or would she have been Effie? Like, don't throw her in a fat suit, even though they probably would have in the 90s, but not a good look. But man, she could sing it. She should have done like a, I can't believe I'm saying this, not you, but she should have done like a Broadway covers album. Or Broadway covers album? Like, oh my gosh. That would have been unreal. Gorgeous, unreal. Because we deserve a fucking CD quality of this. I mean, because we need a whole, like, the storytelling aspect of the yes, musical theater. She, she's a storyteller. Yeah. <laughs> I love that tissue in her hand. I know. Oh, the audience is losing its shit right now. Of course. How could they not? Ugh.
<laughs> just bounce on a well. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Just like, move the mic. And people are like, of course this is over. It's never over. It's <laughs> not. If we know anything. That's why there's an intermission. Oh there's Lord, an there's an ad. <laughs> and you know what? I get it. Because <laughs> they're like, they'll, We need a break, we need like, a breather. They'll still be watching. <laughs> and we are. Page turns. They're like, she was standing there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> she had to take a breath. Right. Mm. Imagine going from that song to that song That's to this the song. Thing. Like, think of two harder songs than End I'm Telling You, and I have fucking nothing. Jesus. Mm. That bodyguard soundtrack was insane. Oh, it's like the singles. Yeah. Like, I can't think of a better collection of songs. I hate that it wasn't a full Whitney album, but I'll get over it one day. <laughs> album of the year? That's, hey, deserve. Didn't j do this on American Idol? She did, it was great. I bet it was. It was great. I bet it was. I think I read it, peaked at number four on the Hot 100. That's Sorry, it? I know. This is a classic. It's a classic. Mm. Where is she? She's I in a different know. spot on the stage. Oh, she's still in the same <laughs> spot. And do you think she woke up being like, I am in great fucking voice today. Like, these people don't know what's coming. <laughs> or was she just opening her mouth like, oh, wow, I sound amazing. <laughs> The thing that I love about her so much is like, it's so effortless that like, I feel like I could do this. I know, and it's like, I really could. It's, like, <laughs> it's so easy, look how easy, right. like she's, of the time she's having with it. And then I try and it's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, that's, I Have Nothing is one of those songs where I'm like, there's no right key. <laughs> it's always too high or too low and there's no right key to sing this song. Like, I how like dare that. the run of? Jesus. Unbelievable. Again, rolling verse two. <laughs> <laughs> verse two of the third song. I know. It's like, are you not tired with me? I know you took that break where we turned the page, <laughs> but even still. I'm exhausted. And it's like, David Foster's a piece of shit. He wrote the shit out of his song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he yes. wrote the shit out of his song. <laughs> Picture montage. Exactly. Someone was told to stop filming this. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. How are you going higher? Why not? That was great. Unbelievable. I can't. I... Don't you dare. Don't you dare.
Slide on them. <laughs> Just slide on them. Oh, girl. This is a once in a lifetime talent. <laughs> I was. We were living together when she passed away, weren't we? Yeah. Um, it was right, right uh, uh, after I moved to LA. I remember. We had another roommate who was having a party. I probably have told this on this channel. And when Whitney passed away, I was like, this is a Whitney memorial party. We will be listening to all of her hits, including the Star Spangled Banner, which is a Whitney Houston single hit. Okay? And, and, and all they wanted to do was play games. I bet. And they party. wanted to listen to Rihanna. And I'd be like, Rihanna! <laughs> <laughs> it was not the time. I also, there's only so much time here. We watched two like 10 minute performances. Also watch, uh, she performs All the Man That I Need, I think at her performance, like for the troops or something. Oh my God. Unbelievable. That performance is so good. And the, I just love how these like straight military guys are just like- Are going crazy. Oh. Cause it's, it's a life altering experience to hear a voice like that in front of you. I saw her live in like 97, 98 at the Fox Theater with my mom. Uh, but the idea of seeing her singing something like that mm -hmm. in 1993, like could you imagine being in that audience? Oh my God. Ah! I just appreciate the genius that she is, was, and will always be. And if the movie's fine, at least it reminded me, and I hope the world collectively, of the brilliance of this magnificent woman, performer, artist, vocalist, mom. I loved her. Well, I love how it like reminded people there is a live album. Yes. Which is like, yes, like, yes all the Whitney albums are great and everything, but like, the Whitney album that like everyone should be listening to is the live it's album. It's the live one. Yeah. You are going to get so much from that and you can thank me for pointing you that way. Yes. Because it is life altering. And who do I have to pay to get the soundtrack of Cinderella released <laughs> to Spotify? This is all about that, isn't it? <laughs> Please. It's been almost 30 years. It is shocking that we, that they had that whole special where they sat down with the remaining cast and talked to them and and did not release, they didn't release it. the album. It's shocking. I need her impossible in my ears at all time while I'm going on my walks. I know. Whatever, it's fine. It's fine. We have the memories. <laughs> we do. Thank you guys so much for watching. Tell us below what your favorite Whitney performance is. If it's one of these or not, we'd love to hear. And I will be clicking on every link. Spoiler. We also have a podcast that comes out every Monday. It's called Two Game Mats as well, TWO. Comes out every Monday and you can find it on your favorite podcatcher. If you want us to react to or review a music video, a live performance, an album, a movie, go to patreon.com slash 2 mats and for certain tiers, we do patron requested videos, which I think you would like. Who do you need to give shout outs to today? To our legendary patrons, Anna Parnell, yes. Montana, yes. Jeff, yes. and Whitney. We and love Whitney. Whitney, thank you so much for existing and we love you all. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.